Okay, in this video we're going to look at learning about the elements and principles of design. John Lovett says the elements and principles of design are the building blocks used to create works of art. So the elements of design consist of these on the screen, point, line, shape, form, texture, colour, value and space. Depending on what you read, sometimes there are more or less elements. A line generally is defined as a mark made by a point, pointed tool or shape. A shape is a flat enclosed two-dimensional shape. Colour is created by light value and the degrees of lightness or darkness. Form is a three-dimensional object or form. Texture is defined as the feeling of a surface of an object. Space is the illusion or depth. It can be two-dimensional or three-dimensional and it can be considered as negative or positive. The principles of design, again, they can be more or less depending on where you're reading, but well, for this exercise we'll focus on the following rhythm, balance, unity, proportion, contrast and dominance. So rhythm is the regular repetition of elements to create interest or cohesion. Balance, a distribu distribution of visual weight on either side of the vertical axis. It can be symmetrical, asymmetrical or radial. We'll look at that later on. Unity, if something has good unity then it's generally visually pleasing. It has an agreement among the elements. Contrast is looking at the arrangement of opposite elements. So it could be light or dark, rough or smooth, small or large. It's used to create visual interest. Dominance or emphasis is how we make parts stand out or create a focal point. It draws the eye of the viewer to the object. We also have other considerations when we look at principles of form and design. And these are tips of the trade that designers use in trying to enhance their designs. So you can see grids, golden ratio, the rule of thirds, hierarchy. This is a little exercise we can use to practice expressing the meaning of some of the elements and principles of design. So in this black square problem, we are given the task of just by using four black squares trying to create a composition that might visually represent the word. So you can see some examples of order, some examples of increase, examples of boldness, congestion, tension and playfulness. Some other design principles that we focus on include figure ground. So this is similar to focal point and as mentioned earlier balance and contrast. But we can also use cropping to create an area of interest. This is an activity where we look at analysing an existing design and try to find the elements of design that it has used and the principles. I'll show you an example of this. So in the first box we can see the element of point. It is being used to create the principle of direction or the element of point being used to create the principle of emphasis and so on. Movement, contrast, balance unity. So to elaborate on emphasis, we can see that emphasis creates a focal point. It's how we bring the attention of the viewer to what is important in our designs. It is the cause of intention or interest within the composition. It commands the attention and makes your design visually interesting. So along with 
our principle of design for emphasis, we can elaborate by trying to put this into practice. Here you can see six examples of using emphasis and these are being applied in different areas. The first one by size, the second by shape, by placement, isolation, value and direction. In this slide, I'd like you to have a go in your book at showing an example of emphasis by size, shape, placement, isolation, value and direction by using just arrows. They can be of any size or shape and you're going to create that composition for each type. Just use black and white. Try to make sure that there's only one area of a focal point. You might find you're combining each of those areas in some cases. Experiment with how strong a focal point you can make without destroying the unity. You may use existing arrow designs from picture fonts or draw your own arrows. Start with six preliminary sketches for each type of emphasis, like in the small boxes below, and then select the most effective solution and execute it in a larger box on your page. As a tip, study the negative and the positive space. So the negative space is behind the artwork. They're just as important as the foreground objects. Okay, so along with emphasis, we also are going to focus on the principle of design of balance. In this exercise, we look at using squares of any size to create a graphic composition for the three main types of balance. So balance as a basic principle of design refers to the way in which the elements, lines, shapes, colors, textures, etc. are arranged. Balance is arranging the elements so that no one part of a work overpowers or seems heavier than the other part. There are three types, as you can see here. And creating balance is achieved through arranging the subject matter in the frames or in the object so that the visual weight is balanced by other subject matter. Let's have a look at more detail at what visual weight means. So visual weight can be achieved in a variety of ways. It could be through having larger objects that makes it heavier or darker objects. As you can see the example in the black dot and the snowflake. It could be high contrast like the example of the red apple amongst the greens or could be complex. Perhaps that red box had a lot of texture or details and then another red box next to it might have none. It could be actually heavier or it could have interesting placement. So the visual weight system works by assigning a psychological form of heaviness to different things we see. These are, on the left are the few general rules that help us determine how much visual weight gets assigned to any particular element of your design. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to have a go at using visual weight, using the design principle of balance with your four squares and using emphasis by just the use of arrows.